What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video we'll be looking at the Copy Tool. It's one of the easiest tools in Revit and it's one of the most widely used. It works with essentially every kind of element in Revit. So let's get started. I've got a few different kinds of elements laid out so we can see some examples of how we might use the Copy Tool. So when you first select the Copy Tool, you're just presented with your cursor with a Copy Tool icon there. And what it's telling you to do now is click and select an element. So I'll first select this wall and I'll hit enter. And now I can see I have that wall highlighted and now it's prompting me to select a start location and then an end location for where I'm going to ultimately copy this element. And if you look at the top here, you'll see there's by default, because this is a wall, it's constrained to this uh, this work plane here in a specific direction. Uh, this disjoin because it's because this element is currently not joined to anything. It's grayed out and multiple. We'll get to multiple in just a second. So right now it's I must all I need to do is select a location to start and I'll I'll just start here in the center and I will move this wall six feet. And because the door and the window are both hosted to the wall that I copied. They went along with it. Maybe that's what you want and maybe not. It's simple enough at this point to just delete them, but just knowing that hosted objects will go with their host, it, it's easy to just know that moving forward what's going to happen. So I'll delete that and I'll select the element this time. Then I'll hit copy. And you can see I don't have to go and select the element again and hit enter. Typically, this is the way I'll use the copy tool. I will first select the element that I want to copy, then hit copy through the hotkey or the, the button up here in the modify tab, and from there move on to using the copy tool. So just like the move tool, I then have the opportunity to select a location to start and then end the copy. Now, like before, I could I could choose any point in this wall this element any element I choose to copy or I could choose some other point maybe I maybe the distance between this grid and this curtain wall is the exact distance I want to copy so I can click the grid there and then you can see I've snapped to the edge of that curtain wall and I've got that resulted copied wall with the window and door there I'll just delete that looking at this desk family if I hit copy I am. See, I can see that, just like anything else, I am prompted with the area with which it will be moved based on the distance, and you can see the dashed border as to where the location of the resulting element will be. Now, if you look up here, you can see that constraint is checked, and that's that's just because of the type of element that it is that it's hosted on the first level work plane. And what we can do is we can unconstrain this by unchecking that. And now we have the freedom to move this desk anywhere that we'd like, in any direction that we'd like. So I'll, I'll move it 10 feet in this direction. You can see that it moved 10 feet in that direction. So I'll delete that and move on to this grid. Just another example of something that copies. I will select the grid. I will choose copy and then choose the point for which to start. I'll, in this case, let's move the grid five feet over and grids are very nice. Now the grid copies, one grid copies, and then I get the two. That's just very nice. Same with a curtain wall. Curtain wall functions just like a wall because it is a wall. I will select the element, choose copy, and then I'll copy there. Very easy. Reference planes work just the same. Copy, they move, copy, move, and basic lines. Now at this point, I will select the line. I'll choose copy, and now I'm gonna select this multiple option. And by this will by default not be checked. So you, this is something you're gonna have to actively do. And that's, that's based on per Revit session. So now that I've selected this every single time that I go and choose copy I'm gonna see that that multiple is checked which is very nice to know and that works all the same with the align tool align multiple too so I've got the multiple checked 
I'll first select the line and then I'll move over let's say I'll go in this direction and let's say I want to move over six feet and now it's almost as if I am now copying this line the line I just copied once again and that's occurring because I've checked the multiple and so I, I'm in a sense copying multiple times which is very nice so I can hit five feet five feet five feet ten feet and this line or whatever element I might be copying is quickly and easily copied a certain di dimension based on my different inputs every single time it's very quick very easy so at this point I'll go to the south elevation and look at this curtain wall specifically now the copy tool gets kind of funky when it gets when it comes to curtain walls specifically mullions and panels of curtain walls. So if I select this mullion, see I've got the mullion selected there and I choose copy, I'm prompted with the outline of the element with which I had selected to copy. I'll, I'll select the element and I will move the mullion three feet over. Well, now I'm getting this error that says that the selection cannot be copied and that mullions and panels cannot be copying with, copied without copy in the entire curtain wall. Now, I, maybe I don't want to do this. That seems a little tedious and that's not what I want. In this case, maybe I just want another mullion here in the center. So what I'll do at this point is I will select the grid line and I will choose copy and I will choose, I'll type in 3.5 and I'll center, that's centered in the middle there. And so now I've got a, a separate grid line and as you can see, the grid line copied perfectly exactly how it should so at this point all we need to do is go to the architecture tab hit mullion I'll do a grid line segment and I'll choose that grid line and we've got that mullion there like we want it same works with panels if I choose this entire panel and I copy it I want to copy it over I'm gonna get that same error again so just knowing that with curtain walls that's that's how it works you're gonna have to copy those grid lines over or or simply create new curtain grid lines through the curtain grid tool. Let's go to the west elevation and I'll see we've got that door and the window in the wall. If I want to move this window, because that window is uh, hosted to the wall, it, it's it's going to be copied along this uh, on this wall, which is very nice. I cannot copy it outside the host or it just simply won't be copied. That's just the way it works and that makes sense. Although you will notice that the constrain is this constrain option is not checked. Actually, by default, it is checked, and so default being checked, I can only move this window up and down. And if I want to move it elsewhere, I can uncheck that constrain and, and copy this window anywhere else on the wall. Another way I can use the constrain, like it's, let's say that the window is constrained again, and I want to move the window, I could also press the shift button and that in a sense is unconstraining without having to go up and uncheck that unconstrained so it's it's a little easier in that sense that you can quickly do that on the fly now let's go to 3d and just like anything else the copy tool works with anything in any view I can copy that wall again same as I did before six feet you can see that the door and the window both went with the wall because they're hosted to the wall. And if in this desk, I can copy that. That moves all the same. You can see by default that that's constrained. And so I can press and hold shift. And I, you can see I can move that around just about anywhere that I want along the work plane. By default, the work plane is going to be level one. And that's because I have not changed the work plane at all. This is just a fresh Revit project. And so if you if you ended up watching the move tool video, I, I described something that was kind of like, a, uh, <laughs> I used the word magical and it's kind of a magical work plane. So if I hit, if I choose this desk and I hit copy, you can see that the dashed line is showing the work plane, basically where the work plane that will be used to copy the desk. And maybe in this case, I want to copy the desk so it's floating in the air above level one. Well, one way around that is I can select the object that I want to copy. In this case, I can choose front. And now I'm looking at the very front of that desk. 
And now if I hit copy, you can see that that dashed line, basically the work plane I will be used to, co that, to copy the desk, is now on the vertical plane. And that's because I sort of forced a new work plane by selecting that front face from the view cube. It, it's kind of wonky, it's, it's a little weird. I didn't have to set the work plane myself. If you looked at the work plane, it's still set to level one. But now I have this work plane that's vertical and I can simply copy this. You can see it, it is constrained to level one, but if I hit shift, it starts to fly in the air. And if I, if I decide to copy it there, it's clearly floating in the air exactly like I want it. So there's just a few different ways that the copy tool works and some things and examples of how the copy tool works and ways at which you could use it to your advantage. I sure hope you learned something today. I know this was a quick tutorial. It's a very simple tool. It's, it's the copy tool. I mean, it, it's something you'll use all the time, but it's, it's good to have covered it in this way. I sure hope you learned something. If you did, if you would, please leave me a like. And if you would take an extra step and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. You can expect more Revit Tools videos as well as all kinds of videos when it comes to Revit and Dynamo in the future. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section below with questions. I will always answer your questions. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.